Welcome to King David Music. This is Jordan Young. I have a little teaching today I've prepared for you guys, which hopefully will be a treat for some of you guys, especially you musicians out there. So yes, what I want to talk to you today is about music as it relates to prophecy. And I want to also talk about the frequency or the tuning of David's harp. So... Some of you may have heard some of my teachings prior to this video about David's harp, but for those that haven't heard, I'll share that information. Um, back in January, I had a dream where uh, I really uh, was aware of David and aware of the tuning of his harp as it relates to his heart. And... Uh, in the dream, I was telling uh, someone that David tuned his heart, I'm sorry, his harp, <laughs> to his heart. And the Lord showed me the, the pitch, the, the musical pitch in which he tuned his harp to. And that pitch is D at 144 hertz. And uh, I've been obsessed with 144 ever since. Um, I've recorded various songs now in that key because how wonderful it feels in my heart. When I hear that frequency, I, it resonates in my heart. And I, David really tapped into this as a prophet. And so since he tuned his heart to that frequency, I think there's something really powerful and healing that accompanies the sound of that harp. And so... I've created this channel as called King David Music to encapsulate what David began, which was prophetic musical inspiration that became a vehicle for the voice of God or the voice of light to be released and expressed. Now, David was also very deep in that he composed all these psalms, which are called the Mizmor. And that was my daughter. And as he's composing these psalms, he's notating all the musical pitches in Hebrew using the Hebraic letters to denote or to connote the various, free, the various um, keys that the psalms are composed in. Now, Dennis McCorkle is a guy that did some research and he discovered there's an actual Davidic cipher that exists in the Hebrew because the Hebrew letters are not just transmitting the sounds, but also the frequencies and the numerical information. Um, all that's a very deep and wonderful study in and of itself. And there's multiple schools of thought on, the, on that subject. But what I want to look at is music as it relates to prophecy, because David was really uh, the, the person that I see exemplified in scripture who took music out of just... A personal hobby and, he, and it became a prophetic vehicle for him. The sound of his harp, the sound of his instrument became a prophetic vehicle in which brought healing and deliverance. And so I want to look at a few scriptures that are in support of this and that's in 1 Samuel 16. Now we know that Samuel um, made some poor choices as a king, or I'm sorry, Saul, excuse me, Saul made some poor choices as a king. And it says in 1 Samuel 16, after the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, a spirit of distress from the Lord began to torment him. 1 Samuel 16, 14. Uh, interesting that Saul must have sinned or done something that grieved the Spirit of God and the Spirit left him. And it says that the Lord sent a spirit of distress or a tormenting spirit to Saul. And Saul was very eager to get rid of this uh, tormenting spirit. So what he did is he called for a man who would play well before him. 1 Samuel 16, 17 says, Saul commanded his servants, find me someone who plays well, who plays skillfully, and bring him to me. And we see in the next chapter, uh, in 1 Samuel 18, it says, The next day a spirit of distress sent from God 
came upon Saul and he prophesied inside the house while David played the harp as usual. Now Saul was holding a spear. Obviously Saul wanted to kill David, but it says while David played the harp, Saul began to prophesy. Very unusual behavior for a king. Kings don't usually prophesy unless the Spirit of God comes upon them in one form or another. Now David, not not speaking any words, but playing his harp skillfully, released a prophetic sound in that atmosphere that caused Saul to prophesy. So also we see in going back to 1 Samuel 16, it came to pass that when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took a harp and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Mm. An act of divine deliverance and healing through the playing of the harp with the hand. David had his harp tuned to his heart. He played skillfully with it. And as that sound went forth, the distressed spirit within Saul could not find a place and had to leave. Saul was filled with the sound of David's harp and he was well. And that distressing spirit could find no residence or place to dwell within Saul. Divine, supernatural, Deliverance through the sound of a harp. So, all that's quite fascinating if you ask me in terms of being a musician. Um, now, what I also want to look at is Elisha in 2 Kings 3.15. The prophet Elisha says, Bring me a minstrel or a harpist. And it came to pass that when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him and he prophesied. I love that. You know, bring me a minstrel, bring me a musician. And that's what the Hebrew says. The word for minstrel is the word menagen in Hebrew, which is, means a musician. And this word menagen comes from the root word nagen, which means to play. So to play an instrument. So a musician is one who plays an instrument. So it's very interesting that David understood his instrument. He understood his harp. And because he was a man after God's own heart, he was in touch with his heart. And therefore he tuned his harp to his heart. Therefore his harp becomes an extension of God's heart. You have to see that. You have to see that there's 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 a um, there's a thread here that connects that connects music as it relates to our spirit. What is man? He is spirit, soul, and body. What is music? Music is melody, harmony, and rhythm. Spirit is melody. Harmony is soul, and rhythm is body. David knew this, so when he released a melody from his harp, it spoke to Saul. It spoke to Saul's spirit. That's why the distressing spirit had to leave, because when David played, the sound of his harp and the anointing of the Spirit of God on that playing was translated directly to Saul's spirit, who was refreshed. Isn't that amazing? So all that. I wanted to lay that foundation for you guys because music and prophecy are so well related. There's one more scripture I want to um, talk about before I move into the next section. And that is Saul, before he goes and becomes king, he's Samuel the prophet is prophesying to him. And he says this in 1 Samuel 10, 5, he says, this is Samuel speaking to Saul. He says, after that, you shall come to the hill of God, where the garrison of the Philistines are, and it shall come to pass that when you come near to the city, you will meet a company of prophets, a band of prophets, coming down from the high place with a psaltery, a tabret, a pipe, and a harp before them, and they shall all prophesy. We know according to scripture, Saul became a changed man when he heard that prophetic music coming forth from that band of prophets. And there was a proverb that was created that day in Israel that says, is Saul among the prophets? 
Saul was changed in his spirit and in his character when he heard the prophetic music from that band of prophets coming down off the mountain playing their musical instruments. Now, I think that in and of itself ought to revolutionize how we see music and how we, we um, view the prophetic. Now, it's my conviction that today's modern music movement, in I shall say the modern worship music, while it's been great and there's been some wonderful songs that God has poured out, I still believe our modern worship move, movement has not become this prophetic vessel that God intended it to be. And I believe one of the reasons why the, mu the music movement has stood aloof from the prophetic movement is because we are out of tune. What do I mean by that? Well, going back to David's harp, he tuned it to his heart. And if we tune our instruments in the music modern worship movement to A at 440, we're already out of tune. We're already in disharmony. We're already disassociating from the, the frequencies of light and the sound of light that comes through music that has been inspired by the Spirit of God. David has given us a key. There is a key. This is the key of David, that he understood invisible reality and he made this information available to us through his psalms, through his music, and through his words and meditations.